So in this super relevant camera comparison video, we're gonna be comparing the Sony a7S III to the Sony CCD TRV228E PAL Handycam. I think it's gonna be very exciting to see how 2004 stacks up to 2020. I really had to go digging in my parents' cupboards to find this old camera to review for you guys. So maybe instead of pressing F in the chat for the old days, let's pay our respects by smashing that like button. Now let's get into it. Now we all know that the A7S III uses SD cards or CF Express Type A cards. And you can get SD cards for pretty cheap these days. But if you want to record 4K or slow motion, you need to get the really expensive V90 cards. It also records 4K up to 120 frames per second or HD up to 240 frames per second. The Handycam, on the other hand, uses Hi8 tapes. It's easy to use, easy to digitize, and just has that like nostalgic feel, you know what I mean? A 128 gigabyte SD card will cost you around 4,000 Rand and at 25 frames per second, you'll be able to get two hours of 4K footage, which is the higher quality, or four hours of HD footage, which is the lower quality. A high 8 tape will also get you two hours of footage on short play, which is the higher quality, and four hours of footage on long play, which is the lower quality. And at 250 Rand per tape, I think you can do the math. The A7S III records all kinds of picture profiles. You've got S-Log, S-Cinetone, Cine4, or anything else that you might want. And you can customize that down to the black levels. It also has some creative stylized looks, which the Handycam also has. Here's a side-by-side -side of both the A7S III and the Handycam in sepia, black and white, and normal. So it turns out the Handycam was doing the same things back in 2004. It's pretty revolutionary, I'd say. And just so you can see, here are some more creative looks that are only on the Handycam. And here are some that are only on the A7S III. The Handycam requires you to digitize your tapes. So I bought this little gadget. It's a little USB converter from RCA to USB. And it only cost me like 250 Rand. The only thing is that you have to digitize in real time. On the A7S III, you just pop your SD card or CF Express card into the reader, and then you drag and drop and copy and, you know, get your footage on your hard drive. But if you have a slow hard drive, this might take just as long as digitizing the tapes. You know what doesn't take any time at all though? Pressing subscribe. <laughs> Uh, anyways, I would really appreciate it. The A7S III uses NPFZ 100 batteries, which last for around four hours of recording. The Handycam uses another variant of the NPF batteries, which is the NPF M30. That lasts, or at least a new one should last, for around four hours of recording as well. So when the battery runs out, it's time to change your tape as well. But come on, four hours? Movies are only an hour and a half long. Who are you, Zack Snyder? Everyone made such a big deal out of it last year when the A7S III finally got an articulating screen after years of Sony mirrorless cameras only having a tilt screen. The Handycam has a 2.5 inch display. And guess what? It flips out and it rotates. Vloggers, I'm just saying, just saying. It even has a built-in black and white viewfinder. So you could just do this. So. Neither of these cameras have ND filters, so they're pretty much equal in that regard. Who needs a lens mount when you don't need to change lenses ever? The Handycam has a 20X optical zoom lens, 2.5 millimeter to 50 millimeter. That's equivalent to a 32 millimeter to 650 millimeter lens on the A7S III. And it's F1.6 to 1.4. What do you need? F1.6, that's like the blurriest blur and blur town. With the A7S III, you'll never be able to find a full frame lens that can zoom 20X in one go. 
you'll have to buy a lens that has a certain range and then, oh, it's I can't see far enough. Now I have to buy another lens. Oh, I can't afford it because it's too expensive. It uses an E-mount, if you must know. Back in 2004, the Handycam had autofocus and manual focus. In 2020, the A7S III had autofocus and manual focus. So they're really pretty much neck at neck on that front. And finally, this is where the Handycam has the A7S III completely beat, if that wasn't clear already. The Handycam has a literal flashlight on it right there. Look at it. Isn't that cool? I mean, I haven't seen one of these on mirrorless cameras before. But uh, let's say you didn't want to have a light, like maybe you're going um, monster hunting, ghost hunting, that kind of thing. It's got infrared. So obviously you can't see that on the camera, but it literally allows you to see in the dark. Do you understand this? I don't think you understand this. I'm gonna turn off these lights and I'm gonna show you. This is what the A7S III can see at 400,000 ISO. It's grainy as hell. And this is what the Handycam can see. It's awesome, isn't it? Sony really cracked low light back in 2004. And then they took it away from us with this camera where you can't see anything. You see, I can see everything. But anyways, let me just turn the light back on. So you can chuck your dual ISO nonsense out the window. When it's pitch black and there's no light, the Handycam can still shoot. It's magic. It's black magic. Well, okay, not, not black magic. It's, it's Sony. So anyways, <laughs> I honestly don't know why Sony didn't stop making cameras back in 2004, because honestly, they have peaked. Peaked. So just stop, Sony. You've done enough. You've graced us with the Sony CCD TRV228E PAL Handycam. Camera technology is done now. We can move on. Ah, oh, nuts. It's probably load shedding again. If you're in America or another place, that's where ESCOM, which is our country's electricity provider, just switches off the power for a while. Those lights are battery operated. So, uh, you know what? Let me switch to the Handycam and we'll finish the video quick. <laughs> okay, okay. So that was just a joke. Obviously, I love my A7S III. I think it's really good. I know all the things. It was just a joke, okay? So I literally just found this Handycam still working at my parents' place over the holidays and thought, let me do a video on it. It's really funny. But anyways, if you did like it, why don't you show us how much you liked it by pressing the join button? Support us in any way you can. It would really, it would really mean a lot. And uh, while you're down there, might as well hit the like button and some of just subscribe as well make a lot of cool and fun filmmaking videos on this channel, so feel free to browse. But that's it from me, Jakub van Bosch, and until next time, go out there, stay safe, and make your movies.